Hello and welcome back to Wake Up London. The time is 7.13am. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. The Everyday Sexism Project then gathered huge momentum uh, when its concept was introduced online by East London and Laura Bates. It records all sexism experienced by women on a day-to-day -day basis. Melina Pone uh, went to meet the founder to see how the project is affecting people's lives and what can be done to tackle the issue. I think that if we live in a world where we open the door to the minor infractions and say, come on, girls, just put up with it, it's not that big a deal if a man shouts about your boobs in the street, then you're bringing people up, and young people especially, in a society where you say it's OK to see women as second-class citizens, and that opens the door to some of the more serious abuses. A lot of people have come to the site, seen other women writing about things that have happened, and gone... Actually, I do have the right to stand up to this. Other people are standing up to this. It's not making a fuss about nothing. You know, you asked what had shocked me. The number of people who write in who are under the age of 16, girls aged 12 and 13, who are being groped and grabbed and touched at school. There was a young woman who wrote to us to say that she had been masturbated on on the tube on her way to work. So many stories from women in the workplace who don't feel able to report what's happening because they're afraid of losing their jobs, particularly in this climate. I was groped on the bus. No one said a word that speaks volumes about what we're prepared to accept and I think if enough people on that bus that day even one or two had stood up and said what are you doing that's not okay it sends such a clear message about what is and isn't socially acceptable and we can all play a part in that so much of what we needed in terms of legislation in this country, particularly in policy, has already been won. But what we're seeing is that it isn't trickling down to have an impact on the ground. So, for example, workplace sexual harassment legislation is fantastic. But the biggest single category of incidents that's reported to us is women in the workplace being harassed, experiencing sexism, experiencing even forms of abuse and assault and being discriminated against. So obviously that's not actually having an impact. And as frustrating as it is, what we need is a cultural shift. It has to be about us each going out there and taking responsibility for the circle that we move in, challenging our friends, challenging our peers and standing up to it when we see it so that we change this idea that sexism is just normal and socially acceptable and kind of a bit of a laugh. The wonderful thing about living in London, I think, is that at least there's this incredible sense of community. There are people doing these incredibly exciting, vibrant, creative things. And it makes me feel really hopeful that we are finding ways of addressing the problem and that there is so much appetite. We've heard from so many male Londoners who've talked about ways that they've started challenging these issues. We heard from one man who was walking past a building site and there were two women walking past at the same time. And some of the builders shouted, get your boobs out at the women. And he just quickly lifted his T-shirt up instead. Now, I know it's just a small gesture, but actually it sends a message to those guys, you know, why would you say it to them? You wouldn't say it to me. And it sends a message to those women, you're not alone, actually, and, and I will take a stand, I will stand up for you. So there you go, Laura Bates talking to us uh, there. I'm joined now in the studio to discuss the issues surrounding feminism by Ros Hardy, Chief Executive of Object, a feminist uh, organisation, and Mike Buchanan from the Anti-Feminism League. So, uh, Mike, I just want to ask you first, uh, men, do they get a rough deal from this sexism debate? I think they do. Uh, we hear constantly from women like Laura Bates and Caroline Criado Perez um, about objectification of women. But um, um, women objectify men just as much. They objectify men in terms of appearance, and they objectify men also in terms of their income. So, for example, you know, it's, it's, it's hardly rocket science to say that beautiful women don't tend to have the ambition of marrying long-distance lorry drivers, do they? Um, now, do lorry drivers whine about that? Of course they don't. It's the way the world works. And it's time for women to stop whining about men uh, objectifying women, which, which at the end of the day is just men finding attractive women attractive. And is what would you say to that then, Ros? Because uh, a is that the case? Difference. There's a different, complete difference between people finding other people attractive, people find each other attractive for all sorts of reasons, and a culture in which the media regularly portrays women as the most single most important thing about us is what we look like. Where we have page three of the Sun, for example, where we have the um, the Daily Sport and the Sunday Sport on display at ankle height in terms of children, page after page after page of naked or semi-clad women being exposed as if the most important thing about us is our bodies and about our breasts. That's that's why that's that's no one why is saying that's, that's the most important why thing. Why that is a problem in a, in a world where there wasn't high levels of violence against women, where there wasn't significant problems of sexual harassment, it would just be words. However, these are often pictures which encourage and create to a climate where it is created that that's what we are and that's what we're for. And that's why organisations like Object want to talk about the impact of media sexism and the impact of those images, in particularly in terms of encouraging 
producers can, and, and the media, etc., to think this isn't actually okay. really good about our think, brand. Let, let, I think, for example, if you look at the sun, actually, if you look at men reading the sun, a significant number start at the back. They only ever read the sports pages. Let's bring I'm Michael not even on this. convinced that many this, sun this, readers actually follow this. Do you think that has a detrimental effect on society? No, it's complete nonsense. Let, let, let's talk about media sexism, shall we? Um, Laura Bates and Caroline Criado Perez, the woman behind the Women on Banknotes, mm. um, they individually have more mainstream exposure globally than every men's human rights advocate has combined Are over you? the last 40 years. No, no, the, no, there's a, there's a lot going on. And if, 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 if you're not as if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to, Ross, would you please stop in, interrupting? If, if anybody wants to understand about men's human rights abuses, they should go to avoiceformen.com and they will learn a great deal. I was at a conference in, in Detroit giving a presentation five or six weeks ago, um, a very successful conference, um, and, and, you know, um, feminists, are, are, you know, are going to have problems in future because, because we are exposing your lies for what they are. I would say one of the worst examples of objectification of men was what the Sun newspaper did to Liverpool football supporters after 96, 96 people were killed after the Hillsborough disaster. Significantly, the images that were portrayed by the Sun, mainly of male Liverpool supporters, was a massive attack on men and massive attack particularly on working class men of Liverpool. It was not feminists who did that, it was the Sun newspaper. Regularly, feminists are accused of things that we've never done, that Michael, we've never said, that, that we never will do, and we never again. have <laughs> done. Who on earth forces women to go onto page three of the Sun? It's just ridiculous. Economic you know, and social pressure. Absolute and rubbish. Absolutely. Absolute rubbish. There are thousands of women very happy to earn very easy money for doing very little. And regardless of how the choices that women make, I think we have to... This have is women as victims. All so the time, women as victims. I've got to wrap this up now, but in one word, uh, does sexism still exist today, in your opinion? Yes, of course it does, and it also towards harms... Women. And, uh, towards women, but it also harms men. And, men, and yeah. part of the conversation that it's really important to have is about how it will be of massive benefit to men, as well as women, to get beyond the M narrow gender stereotypes much that more than groups one word like that the anti-sexism group stuff, but, pushes uh, us into. And, Mike, um, from your point of view, then, uh, obviously... Men, 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 men suffer vastly more from sexism than women. I mean, some of this whiny stuff from Laura Bates. You know, men, I mean, fathers denied See, access to their children. That we have 17 areas in our election manifesto where where sexism basically makes the life very, very difficult, yeah. very difficult for men. And I've, I've yet to find, find a feminist who can, who can tell me one area of, 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 uh, uh, you, know, of, of you know, anything like as serious. Sure, brilliant. Mike, thank, again, more than one word, but thank you very much indeed, and thank you very much indeed, Ros, as well. Uh, more on that, of course, in Headline London, but today's poll today is sexism. Uh, Headline London will be at 12.30, uh, but today we're asking on our website, um, do you think that sexism has become a normal part of society? These are the results uh, so far. 75% uh, of you think um, yes and 25% of you think no. Thank you very much indeed for all those votes and keep your comments coming in uh, on um, uh, Twitter and on Facebook. Use the hashtag WakeUpLondon. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on that.